uh, I'll go back to this simple outline here. Some of you may think it's, uh, it's too difficult, too hard. And I want to say this. Just do a simple sermon. Even half a page. Even do half a page. It's fine. It doesn't have to be very, very long. Now, after you get the outline, then you can write longer. But it doesn't have to be very long. Okay? Now, let me use this outline here. I hope... Now, I will guide you to think. Guide you to think. If we use this outline and have the theme of... Um, Seeking God's guidance, okay? Jesus said, My sheep hears my voice. So, how do we preach this sermon using that Jesus word? My sheep hear my voice. So, in interpretation of the biblical passage, that the, the interpretation is that God will speak to us. He will guide us. And the guidance will be good guidance that it will help our life and, and help our life to be used by God, to be blessed by God. Okay? And then examples. How people don't live out uh, this God's nature. So there are people who don't listen to God's voice. God told them, not to be angry. God told them to forgive. God told them not to have lust. But they did not respond. They say, it's okay, I have to sin now. I have to be angry with the person. I have to have lust now. And then they think that they will, you know, enjoy the lust. Or they just are controlled by the anger. But what happened is, they are controlled, you know, they are not guided by the Holy Spirit, and then they will lose the voice of the Holy Spirit uh, as time goes on. They will not hear from God clearly. There are some people, even they say, they claim to hear from God, but those voices are not from God. Some people say, oh, God wants me to uh, commit this sin. God wants me to use uh, witchcraft to draw people to the church. Uh, they give excuses for disobeying God. So there are people who abuse, you know, they say they hear God's voice, but actually they're hearing from Satan. And then people who hear God's voice, that uh, when we obey God's voice, the Holy Spirit of uh, speaking to us, we obey the Holy Spirit, and then we will, um, God will guide us and use us and raise our life to a higher level. Now, for instance, for my life, I have many years that <clears throat> I was not free to do, uh, to do mission work. <clears throat> but I have the move of God. I really want to do mission work. And I just, I was just patient. I prayed to God, Lord, open the way for me. At that time, it was not open. And, but God guided me, guided me, and through the time, He taught me how to handle my lives, how to build up a close relationship with God. And all this prepared me that I can be a missionary one day. So that's example, a positive example. And then God's nature and grace. God's nature is He is not a God who keep things to himself. He is a God who speaks to people. He is a God who is outspoken. He wants to speak to people. He will guide people. And uh, that's his nature and his grace. He will speak to us directly. That's the grace uh, to ourselves. And grace of transference. He can speak to us so that we can help other people to hear God's voice, or He can speak to us to teach other people how to hear God's voice. And then He will reward us. 
reward us if we hear God's voice and obey Him. Remember, we talked about this few points about God's nature and grace. First, God's nature. Second, the grace He gives to us directly. Second, the gift of transference. Fourth, reward. So these are four points you can talk about God's nature and grace. So here, again, God's nature. He is an outspoken God. God's grace. He will speak to us to guide us. God's grace of transference. We can use this gift to help other people and teach other people how to hear God's voice. And then fourth, reward. He will reward us when we hear His voice and then obey Him. Okay, why? Why many people don't hear from God and don't obey God? Because they have too many noises around them. They, you know, they're always、uh, busy. They're always thinking about different things. They're angry. They look at the faults of people. Then they have a lot of voices. When the mind is confused, they cannot hear God's voice. We need to have time of quietness. Thank God, O、oh、Lord Jesus, you're so wonderful. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I enjoy you. You're a gracious God. You want to help me. So we want to be motivated by God's grace. God loves me. God wants to use me. God wants to raise my life to a higher level. When we believe this, then we'll hear more and more from God. So,、um, so why people don't hear? Because they too busy, or they when they hear, they don't obey. And the reminder and warning. So when we disobey God, there will be consequences. So how to hear God's voice? First, we think about how He has spoken to us in the past. So history. Remember, first point is history. How he has spoken to us in the past, and then second, take care of problems. What stops us from hearing God's voice? And third, have a close relationship with Him, praise Him, love Him, and then fourth, listen to the Holy Spirit's guidance. When we read the Bible, the word the word of God will speak to us. Actually, God speaks to us very often when we read the Bible. The Bible will speak to us and tell us to obey Him, to love Him, to、uh, follow Him. So when we read to forgive other people, then the Holy Spirit will move us to forgive other people. So whenever we read the Bible, the Holy Spirit moves us to obey the Word of God. That is the voice of the Holy Spirit. So we listen to the Holy Spirit and obey Him. And then we'll start to hear God's voice more, and we can remember. All this time, God has spoken to us. So that's how I demonstrate using, uh, using uh, hearing God's voice. Okay, now I want to talk about our life before we can have this kind of message. If a person's life is bitter, or he is under tension, or he doesn't believe in God's goodness, then he cannot talk about God's nature and grace joyfully. So we need to build this up and say God is a good God. So remember all the good things God has done for us. How God is gracious to us. How God blesses us. How God has kept His promise. And then we thank God. So we pay attention to how God works in our heart. Now I notice there are a lot of works of God in my life. For instance, when I sinned, He drew me to repentance and hate the sin, and realize that sin are destructive. So that's the voice of God. I I thank God for that, and I thank God that God has not given me up when I was weak. He brought me to repentance to appreciate God, so that when I think about the voice of God, to take me out of my sinful ways in the past, and then I notice God's teaching me. God taught me how to handle my sins, how to handle my my、uh, my worry, how to handle my lust, how to handle my weakness. 
and how to teach. So God spoke to me continuously. Like even here when I'm teaching, God is reminding me how to teach simple and have simple points so that people can follow. So I hope you can follow and understand that it's not very, very difficult to have simple points so that you can understand. I don't mind to explain more fully. So if you have questions, you can send it to me in the leader group now and then I can respond to your questions. So I remember all this and also remember how God has saved my life and provided for me. So I'm very thankful to God. I'm very happy with God. When I'm very happy with God, I like God. I enjoy God. I have strength from God. I like everything about God. And the more I like Him, the more I'm blessed by Him, the more I'm strengthened by Him. And then when I like Him and I pray to Him much, and then I went to the mission field, I saw many, many miracles. Now, I saw many miracles before I went out. When I experienced the Holy Spirit, I prayed for people to experience the Holy Spirit. It has happened many times. And I went to the mission field, it happens more because the people are more in need in the mission field. And I pray for people and then they experience healing, they experience joy, they experience demons, demons driven away. And I say, wow, God is so good. God is so good. And God has given me so many teachings. So I say, Lord, you know, my life is nothing if I'm not used by you. If I don't have a close relationship with you. And you have saved me. And you have given me a wonderful life. I want to make the best of my life. Uh, it's, you know, for now, I can just relax every day and and play tennis and just uh, sleep a lot and don't do anything. I can do that too, you know, but I prefer to serve God because God is so good. So in my heart, I have this motivation and I, have, I thank God for the provision so that I can help different groups. So when I see people who are sincere to learn, if you write assignments, right? Sermons. I, then I see that you are sincere and I will help you more. I notice that there are some people who just want to take advantage. Now, if you take advantage, actually it's not for your benefit. You will lose things because if you take God's money, take God's instrument and don't use it for God's purpose, God is not happy with that. So I hope you sincerely want to learn and I want to help you. And when you sincerely want to learn, I can motivate more people to give so that we can provide more for you. But I haven't seen much of that. So I hope you will say, when we follow God more, we seek God's kingdom and His righteousness and we'll be blessed by God more and we want to enjoy God. I want to talk about how good God is. So basically, this way of preaching, I call it God's nature preaching method. It's talking about God's nature and grace so that people like God and, like, and enjoy God and then they're strengthened by God and they're motivated to serve God. At the same time, they're reminded by the law that if they sin, there are serious consequences. But most of the time, the main motivation should be God's grace. So if you understand that. If you understand God's grace can motivate people, then you can write assignments and I'll be very happy. Anyone who writes assignments to me, I'm very happy. Even if you cannot write well, I'm very happy. And I want to help you to do better. So I hope that will give you the motivation uh, to enjoy God, to think about the goodness of God and o obey Him in every way. So you what you do when you select your sermon, you read the Bible for uh, a, some Bible verses that you want to preach about. And then you think about what do those verses say about God's nature and His grace? What does the Bible verses tell me about what God is doing to bless me? And what is His nature. Now sometimes the Bible verse doesn't say his nature clearly. We have to think what nature does God have to have in order for him to do that. For instance, 
He forgives because He has the nature of forgiving. He's the nature of accepting sinners. He can love because He has the nature of love. He can give us joy. He asks us, uh, He say, Rejoice in the Lord because He is a joyful God. So everything He asks us to do, He has that nature. He is holy also, you know, not just He's not just gracious and full of grace and love. He's also holy. And but his holiness is beautiful because in heaven is holy and all the people there are very happy. There is no sin, there is no fighting. It's all joy and love in heaven. So his holiness and his grace and his love are all beautiful. So I hope that you see that and then you will enjoy God and you say Yes, I want to obey God. I want to love God. I want to serve God. I want to mo motivate people to, to enjoy God and love God. Okay? Let us close with a prayer. You can stand up and enjoy God. Enjoy God. It's very important when we pray. Don't just think of praying or reading the Bible as some kind of work. It is not some kind of work. It is understanding God, seeing the goodness of God, and enjoying Him. So in this prayer, I try to help you to enjoy God, okay? And when you stand up, you can feel His presence more, okay? Close your eyes and stand up, please. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Your creation is beautiful. You have created beautiful things. You are full of wisdom. You are full of love. We can see the love of parents toward the children because you are full of love. You've create, you put love into the hearts of parents. You put hearts in the hearts of, uh, in the hearts of uh, animals that they will love their children. Father, we thank you because you are a God of love. And we are sinners and you forgave us and you give us eternal life and you send the Holy Spirit to move in our heart to guide us to forsake our sin and to obey you and to follow your beautiful way. It's wonderful. God, you are a wonderful God. And you give us all kinds of spiritual gifts. You give us spiritual gifts that we can serve you with music, with our preaching, with our life, with our caring for people. Lord, you are a God of blessing. You give us spiritual gifts. You give us opportunity to serve you. And when, you, when we serve you sincerely, when we serve you sincerely, you will remember it and you reward us forever. You will reward us now and forever. Lord, help us to have faith in you that we want to help the people to enjoy you. When people enjoy you, they will be strengthened by you. When people enjoy you, they love you, they like you, then they will be strengthened by you. Father, we thank you, thank you, thank you. You're such a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We love you. We enjoy you. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. We want to enjoy you. We hold on to you, Lord. We hold on to you. And you're very happy now. You're very happy that we are following you, you now. We are very happy that we are loving you now. You're happy with us. You're happy with your children, especially children who love you, who obey you. You love us very much. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're a gracious God. You're a wonderful God. You're a beautiful God. Oh, thank you, Lord. And you do wonderful things in our lives. You do greater things in our life. And you use our life more and more. Lord, give us strength. Lord, take away the coronavirus so that we have the freedom of worship more, so that we can have the gathering as before, we know that this is preparing for the last days. The last days are coming. Lord, give us more time to do evangelism. Lord, give us more time. If not, please come back soon. 
Lord Jesus, we look forward to seeing you. We thank you. And we know that you appreciate everything we do in your name. Everything we do sincerely in your name, you're very happy. We want to enjoy you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. We enjoy you. We relax in you. It's so wonderful to have you as our Father. We like you. We like you. We enjoy you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Help us to relax in you. Just to relax in you. To enjoy you all the time. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I pray that God will give you strength in Him, that you enjoy God, that you appreciate God, that you tell people how wonderful God is, and then tell them how to change. So the two main things, two main points that you want to talk about are God's nature and grace, and then how. These two main points are the most important. Now, the next would be uh, reminder and warning why they uh, you know uh, that if they don't follow God, those are the consequences. But we want to mainly talk about, you know, mainly we talk about how wonderful God is related to the theme. If the theme theme is about uh, God's wisdom, then we say, wow, God is full of wisdom. He can create so many beautiful animals and plants, and He has a wise plan in our lives. He has a wise plan to prepare Jesus to come. He has a wise plan how to bring us to Jesus how He has, has saved different people, so He is a God of wisdom. And then, and then if we don't have wisdom of God, if we uh, live like a fool, that we don't follow God's way. We are living as a fool and we'll face destruction. And then how we can have wisdom of God? From the Bible, that uh, we can think about how God has taught us from the Bible in the past. So first is from the past how God has taught us wisdom, and how we have been foolish, how we have been foolish. And then we come to God and have a close relationship with Him and read the Bible to learn of His way, way of wisdom. And then we obey the Holy Spirit and we'll have more and more wisdom. So any theme, you can mainly follow this God's grace, nature and grace, and then how. So these are the two points that you must have. Okay, so we must have how. Uh, God's nature and grace, okay? God bless you. <clears throat> if you have questions, please send to me. And <clears throat> please send me the assignments. And then, um, <clears throat> and then I can help those who do assignments following the, assi uh, the instruction that you've received. You can receive the thermometer that you can have your meetings in your church. Uh, if you just do the assignment, it's not so difficult. So you try to do it even a short one. You just uh, follow this outline and then you can, uh, when I pass you, then you, I'll send it to you. Okay, God bless you. God be with you. I'm happy to be with you and I'm happy to serve God and I hope that you all are happy to learn and to grow in your ministry. 